This episode is brought to you by TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com is your all access to culture. Check out cultural merchandise like leggings, hats, mini boxing gloves and bags. Also t-shirts like hip-hop, nature, rock bands, reggae and dark fantasy. Fast shipping worldwide. That's TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com Now let's check out this episode. There are several songs that I produce. Um... And made big hits too. Mm-hmm. You understand? From back then that some people didn't even know. One of my biggest combinations was a garnet silk. Yeah. Okay. You brought me to this story. Let's go into this one and take your time with this. Because I have a two-part when it comes to this story here. Continue. <laughs> All right. So garnet silk became a bridging. Mm-hmm. Because he was living up the road mm-hmm. from where I was living. I lived like at the beginning of the road and he lived couple houses up you understand on top of a hill and he used to pass all the while and stop and we heal up each other and i say yo what going and we heal up each other and him gone and one day him my pass and him stop and say yo richie you know so we don't sing the song together yet i'm saying all right my boss don't worry yourself may i come check you mm-hmm. may i have a song more here he said come later on about five o'clock mm-hmm. i remember my book there and he said all right listen to the song i'm gonna play the song Get on up, stand up, fight back, and don't give in. Don't let the things they say and do weaken your heart and conquer you. Just make, and he said, stop, stop the song, stop the song, and him call him bridging them. Mm-hmm. Bagarasta bridging, and them come a listening thing, and every man I said, no, sir, this a pepper, this bad, and Ray, and him I said, so Richie, will you sing this song already? He said, no, nah, man, mm-hmm. sing it already, but I uh, can't go back to the studio, and we just take out some of the parts. And you sing some of the parts. But them time the gun is still hot like fire. So me I said, boy, it's my song. So it's best for me to start the song and then him come in. But the the the, the conventional way at them time there was for me to sing a verse and a chorus and then him come in and sing a verse and a chorus. Mm-hmm. But me I said the way the man had star. I feel like I want to share the song equally. So I came up with the idea of me singing, don't let the things they say and do, then him sing. We gain your heart and conquer you, me. Don't make your life wanna shoot him. And I know Jawas, so we sing the song line for line for line for line, and then we sing mm-hmm. the chorus together. So that was, I think, the beginning of making songs that way. Mm-hmm. We sing the song that way, there, and the song just turned out to be a scorching hit. You understand? A song that really connect all over the world and thing, you know? And I produced that song for my good friend Tap Rankin. Because Tap Rankin wasn't in Kingston when the song was done. I feel the song. I called Tap Rankin and said, I have a song I'm going to do. And he just tell me for call Steely and Cleavy and then play the rhythm and give me. I'm going to take it, go up to the studio, record myself, everything. Garnet sing, same one sing a song. I'm going to check Garnet, play it for him. He love it. We record the song. And then here it is today, a big, 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 big song across the world, household it. So the story that. With that song now, okay, that was the song. Now I need to hear about the dub plate, the Kilimanjaro dub plate. How did that <laughs> come around? All right. So the Kilimanjaro dub plate now. Mm-hmm. The song has scotch. The song has mash up the whole plate. But them time the Ghana still was having some problems in the country. Mm-hmm. See? With... He was building a house with mother and people have stopped thief the material and all them something. That's what I was hearing. Mm-hmm. So it means to spend a lot of time down there. Um but the people, every song want the dub. Every song want the dub. But of course, Garnet is not here, so we can't do the dub. We have to wait for him till him come in. Mm-hmm. See? So I talked to him on the phone a few times and he said, Richie. We have another song for doing now. We have to do Seven Spanish Angel. The song that was done by Ray Charles. We have to do it. So tell 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 the musician and just get it together. So when we forward, we're gonna just record it and then say, yeah, man. Mm-hmm. And thing and but then him pop up one at a time and Jaro, him and Ricky Tupa bonafide bridging. Them time there and Jaro, the whole Jaro family, and him a bridging. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying Richie, may I come in, you know, but me can't stay. We just are coming for a little thing, but me come meet up around a jar and I shut the one down feed now. I'm saying, all right, no problem, man. I'm a read up around there. And I'm stepping at the place and thing. And we do the intro. I said, yo, Jaro, 
Garnet Sound, Jara, Richie Sound, say some Richie Steve now with us. It's a boom and shot the dub. And him cut out because Bugger Sound here, same up a Jara, and I run, come to come get the dub. And him shot out. Boy, the last time that me ever see Garnet, brother. It was really, really a sad moment what took place after that, which we don't have to go into. But um, it was really, really sad that it turned out the way it turned out. And um, I remember how happy I was when that song dropped and how the song had gone and looking forward to do so much more work. As a matter of fact, the last performance, mm -hmm. no, that wasn't the last time I saw it. The last performance he did was on my birthday bash. Mm -hmm. Based on the strength of the song, I was putting on a birthday bash and me call him and ask him if it's possible for him to come mm -hmm. for the birthday. And he said, I can't miss a birthday bash. I'm going to put on the birthday bash in a club named um, up by Ligani at the time. Um, what is the club name? Mirage. Mirage. Mirage was a big fancy club back then. Mm -hmm. And when they, they, we advertised the show and the show hype, it was me, Garnet Silk, Brian and Tony Gold, Mikey Spice, them tiny Mikey Spice now have no fame yet. Um, Scatter was singing for Inner Circle now and Chevelle Franklin, a little girl them time there. And um, nice lineup of artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tell you, say, when we start get closer to the show, everybody start to miss a gun and say, nah, come on the show, you know. Them time they we was missing a couple of shows. Okay. You understand me? And people are saying, nah, come on. I remember my calling him and say, gun it. We know you're busy, you know, brother, and you don't know where your brother is, you know, so you can't live with me. You have to come on the show or you can't come. Because if you can't come, tell me so that we can um put in someone in your place. He said, Richie, worry not that yourself and listen to no one. Me I come on your show. Mm -hmm. Say, all right, brother, come hear the conviction and I'm voice. And he was the kind of you like that. If he never come, you would tell me. Yeah. Some of just know me, no others know, say, I'm going to come. I'm going to make no other arrangement with no other artists. I remember the night of the show, when the, sh the, the show rams so till it couldn't hold. I mean, people outside I couldn't come in at the club. Mm -hmm. And it was a decent sized club with, that can hold a lot of people. And I remember. Everybody sing and everybody sing until the artist them finish off now. Mm -hmm. And we did there and we said, boy, John was star. Like on it, now go come in. Like him now go forward in on. So the man said, boy, Richie, you don't know you try your best. Just go up on stage and explain to the people them. But you know, that was always a very uncomfortable thing to do, you know. You go up on stage and explain to people about something that is as disappointing as that because them sang this song was the number one song in the country and everybody want to hear me and Garnet sing it because they never hear me and them sing it yet. Mm. And when we step out on the stage, you know, and the crowd reel up and feel like, say, Garnet, come on, me, I go call up Garnet, you know. And I remember when we said, break it down. And when it was a boom and take it down, now me, I get ready to tell the people, I'm so boy. The man of our, you know, me just hear a voice say, in there. But me just hear the voice, I'm vaguely hear the voice, but me could I hear what the voice say. Mm -hmm. I know so many people that look around to see if him there or not. Me just start introducing me you now. <laughs> because I still remember the conviction in him voice when him say, don't worry yourself, man, me have a daddy. Me still remember the conviction. So me I say, so how him could have sung so convicted in a way, my tell me, and then don't show up. Mm -hmm. Me have that hard for believe, man. So when the voice say in there, me just knew same day after true. I remember when I call on the man to a stage virgin, man, and the band start play fight back, you know. Anybody who was in that club that night can tell you. It was like the club ceiling was shaking down like it. I got dropped down from the wall with the pandemonium and the place when the man step on from the stage, you know. I remember him come on stage and him hold him up on my shoulder and I saw him up and sing the song in the bridge and I would sing the song and perform the song and him and I sing and him and I tremble and never forget the man and I tremble and him and sing the song and we are singing the song and we are singing the song and him we, 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 we pull up the song so till he couldn't pull up no more mm -hmm. and me now I excuse myself from off of the stage because me I say he must have to sing one, at least one half dozen tune because the people and love him you know them love the people them, they, they was so in love with Garnet Silk, and Garnet Silk was so scarce during them time. Yeah. 
because you just couldn't really get him to do shows because he must have do some things all over the country. And Billy Moley, the house, I know him passionate about his mother, just like how me love my mother, I'm passionate about, about my mother. So he wanted to spend time for dealing with that. So people kind of miss him. I remember in the step off of the stage and the whole crowd go quiet and me don't know if I for call him back because I don't want to call him back and I'm gone. So me said me I step off of the stage and I'm going to find out what happened. And when we go on this, when we go around there, I say, Ghana, them want you back in there. You have to come back. I'm saying, Richie, I hear a night, man. It's not my night. Are your birthday? Look more. We talk to you tomorrow. And him caught. And that was the last time I saw him, brother. That was the last time. What's it was really, really, really a heavy one when news got back to us about what happened. Mm -hmm. It was really where I was torn apart so bad. So bad that me just couldn't say nothing for days. Me couldn't talk about nothing. Just the, the whole memory and everything that happened was just right in front of the face. And it was just sad. You know, really, really sad. Mm. The crazy thing with it, you guys only cut one dub plate and only performed that song one time. One time. Yes. Yes, sir. If that and I still have that. I still have the video of that performance on a tape under my bed right now. I mean, just never ever show nobody. We just have it. Okay. Mm. That's crazy. That's the power of that song here because everybody that I spoke to that talks about Garnet So, they say that he had a real mystical energy to him. He was a real different type of person. He was a special human being. Garnet Silk was a special, special human being. He would have the kind of energy there that you don't find that kind of energy in a lot of people at all, mm -hmm. you know? To just be on a scene and listen to him talk was, was a different experience. That was my vibe with him. When him, when him talk, you know, and he and I had a great friendship that nobody knows. know. There's a man who just rate me, I'm just rate him because there were some things that him had do that I was doing the same thing. Like, I'll share a little part with you. Okay. We both come from country, we both have come from nowhere to be blessed to have something and father bless we. So what him do is bring in a portion of my brothers in Kingston who wasn't as educated in sending them back to school. Me and him buck up at the same school doing the same thing because I have family member that I was sending to the same school. Mm -hmm. You understand? So his his um my bridgingship with him was more based on just how we were living, not just music. Mm -hmm. You know, we have great respect for each other based on what we were doing for families that, that the public don't know about. That's wild right there. Just to even know, because again, a lot of times we only see people, but you don't know what's really happening behind the scenes because clearly you just don't sing. There's other facets to your life also with other things that you're doing and that you're involved with from time to time. But you wonder, I know, by now that when an artist break, it's not the many people that just sit tagging along behind them and all over the place mean that much to them, you know. Because we know the entourage go to while some of the bridging that might be genuine. Some of people join the bandwagon based on the um, popularity of the artist or what opportunity they can get. And, and unfortunately, that's just the truth, you know. But there are some people who share special moments and who have a special relationship with people based on who, what they're doing and, you know, all these type of things. And even wish to establish it either. Just hold it better. Mm -hmm. We don't need to have to go out there and load up nothing. We just have to do what we are do. But what we are doing is so purposeful and meaningful for our families that when me realize that he might do the same, me, we just develop a really great vibes. Come in my second and silk a rasta man will believe now when believe now me I want ball at you. But yet uh, we do the big song. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people might wonder how oh, the combination they come out or whatever car two different vibes. But no man, we are the same in spirit. We are do the same purposeful, meaningful things for our families. So that is how me and him did really come together and end up singing that powerful song. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusica.com.